morning. I'm Charles Kuralt, and this is Sunday morning. It is a lovely, soft Easter morning here in the East, the sort of morning that encourages hope, which is, after all, the idea of Easter. And you will find symbols of hope scattered through our 90 minutes today. One fine and tenacious example is a place in Virginia where people care about one another and where for a long time now they have been engaged in a small war against poverty and ignorance. Ron Allen will report our Easter morning cover story. The Roanoke Valley of Western Virginia was one of the first major battlefields in the nation's war on poverty. But since that war was declared 25 years ago, successive administrations in Washington have retreated, leaving local community agencies to lead the battle. Our milepost for Easter Sunday morning is full of tulips and iris and daffodils and hope. Now, a small war. Last week, a congressional report said that during eight years, roughly the years of the Reagan administration, the richest one-fifth of Americans got 11% richer, while the poorest one-fifth of our people got 6% poorer. Sometimes it seems that the war on poverty has become a small war indeed. But some of the fighters in that war just won't give up because they see that they are making a difference. From the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, Ron Allen reports our Sunday morning cover story. These children in Roanoke, Virginia live in poverty, but they are benefiting from free programs that were started a generation ago. This administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. This valley of a quarter million people is a microcosm of America. Racially mixed and one of the first places where the opening salvos were fired when President Lyndon Johnson declared war on poverty 25 years ago. We have a right to expect a job to provide food for our families, a roof over their head, clothes for their body, an opportunity to have our children educated. And with God's help, we will have it in America. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's been a generation, but you don't solve it in a generation. I mean, it's a, it's a multi-generation problem. Cabell Brand is a successful businessman and community activist who has declared no ceasefires in the war here in the Roanoke Valley. And it really does distress me to hear people say that we waged a war on poverty and poverty won. Poverty hasn't won. We know how to solve the problem and we will find the resources to deal with it. This old building, which once housed a flour mill, is headquarters for a community service agency called Total Action Against Poverty, TAP. It's a patchwork of 31 separate programs aimed at the roots and symptoms of poverty. Head Start was the organization's first program. It faced a lot of opposition because the classrooms were integrated. People didn't like to integrate the schools. People didn't like federal programs. They didn't like the federal government telling them what to do. Didn't like the federal government coming in and setting up a program. And they burned crosses on our workers' yards. They threatened me. They threatened my kids. But Head Start developed into one of the most popular programs in the nation. Studies document that Head Start cuts dropout rates, teen pregnancy rates, and graduates are less likely to have problems with the law later in life. It's at the heart of TAP's war on poverty. Count that. That focus on education extends beyond preschoolers. TAP also has high school equivalency programs for students who have dropped out. Um, most of my life, you know, I've been on a wrong side of the law and um i'm at the point of my life now that if i don't get myself together you know and, and, and i'll be in, I, I go to penitentiary probably for the rest of my life and um i always want a lot of money and i want to get a lot of money the right way 
And one of the ways of doing this is to get my GED so I can go to college and get my degree. It's, just, it's a very same thing you've been doing. Okay. Many of these students will enter one of TAP's job training programs after they receive a high school equivalency diploma. Programs so effective, there are waiting lists to enroll. Okay, start. You can't really raise a family on three thirty-five an hour, so I'm looking for job skills so that I can do a little better. Um, you know, I really look forward to getting off of any type of aid, and uh, you know, I want something for myself and for my daughter. Found a replacement one that's right there. Yeah. The Roanoke Valley Agency has waged war on many fronts, and some of its programs have dramatically improved the quality of life in the rural areas beyond the city. They've weatherized and repaired broken down homes. It was in bad shape. Yeah, we had a great big hole right downside the sink, and the sink had a great big hole in it, and the, and the sink was just going on down through the floor, and I was going down through the floor when I stand and wash dishes, and it was, it was bad. And for people like Charles and Viola Johnson, TAP has provided something that so many Americans take for granted. Hot and cold running water and a bathroom. And for 60 years of your life, and, yeah. you never had an indoor no. bathroom? No, no, I had to go outside. Mm -hmm. And Gene, that's why I called it, you know, it's a precious bathroom. You know, the more houses we can do, the better serve the people in need. James Robinson is a construction foreman. I know I can't give everybody a million dollars, but just this little piece here makes me feel good when a person says to you, thank you very much for making my life a little better. It makes mine better also. But despite the successes, TAP has only been able to reach out to 25% of the poor people in Roanoke County because of its limited funds. So while they were able to make some improvements to Shirley Martin's ramshackle house, much work remains to be done. It needs a new roof. They put patch it, but it's still leaking in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And Martin is one of some 80,000 Virginians who still use a privy. She has no bathroom. Well, it's very hard at my age. When I was younger, I didn't mind it as bad. But since I've gotten older, my health has always been bad. It's just hard to cope without a bathroom. The biggest disappointment to me in the last 25 years has been the way the federal government has really copped out on their responsibility. They started Cabell Brand has seen many funding cuts as chairman of TAP since 1965. After Lyndon Johnson was president, successive presidents tried to kill the program altogether. President Nixon tried to kill the program. President Ford tried to kill the program. Unfortunately, President Carter didn't do anything really to help it. And then President Reagan tried to kill the program, and now it's not in President Bush's budget at all. At the start of the war on poverty, TAP and other agencies were fully supported by the administration in Washington, but opposed by many local politicians. Today, the reverse is true. Roanoke Mayor Noel Taylor recently addressed TAP's board of directors. It would be difficult for me to imagine the city of Roanoke without this organization. TAP came into being, and, and there were a lot of people who did not believe. There were a lot of people who did not get on board immediately, but one by one, this organization has won the hearts and the support of the people for this community because it works. Over the years, Congress resisted killing the community anti-poverty program altogether, but funding dropped sharply cut by more than 30% in the last decade alone to a low of $380 million. That funding in the form of a block grant is on the line again. And if the community service block grant is not passed by the Congress, and it's not in the Bush budget, it has never been in a Reagan budget, and if that isn't passed and continued, all of the 950 community action agencies in the United States, after being established for 24, 25 years, will go down the drain. So the war on poverty would then be dead. Talking about $400 million, roughly. About, about, this, about the amount of money of a nuclear submarine to keep all the community action agencies in the United States going. The renewed uncertainty over funding comes at a time when TAP is expanding its services. It has opened Roanoke's first shelter for homeless families. We have groups, we have counseling to help us 
just having people there that genuinely care, you know, and they're not just, yeah, okay, you know, they really care. Mm -hmm. Huh? And there's a new program offering free medical care to poor children who otherwise would not have consistent attention. Dr. Douglas Pierce joined TAP in starting the program. This nation will, will be just as good tomorrow, just as good as our children are going to be. And if they don't grow up and become responsible citizens, and, and if they're not healthy citizens, then we've got some big problems and, and many big bucks are going to be spent on their care. The average American does not demand much, but we have a right to expect in this rich country. Twenty-five years ago, the war on poverty was seen as a great battle that could end in a clear-cut victory. The veterans still on the front lines know better now. They view the war as an unending series of victories and defeats, too difficult for a conclusion, too crucial for a ceasefire. Shuffle to the left and then you shuffle to the right and then you jump.